We don't often equate philosophers with bravery, but Bernard-Henri Lévy breaks the mold in many ways. Since the start of the war in Ukraine, he's traveled to many of the frontline locations we've all heard about in the news, places like Kharkiv, Kherson, Odessa, and Bakhmut. He went to bear witness and brought a film crew to document what he saw. The result is an impressive new documentary called Slava Ukraini, meaning glory to Ukraine. It's out now in select theaters. Bernard-Henri Levy, welcome. Great Thank to have you, you. Farid. Um, I want to ask you about this issue of, of bravery just to begin with, because it's always struck me as one of the, it's sometimes underrated, you know, when you think about, we often think about smarts and intelligence and, but if you think of great leadership, like with Zelensky, bravery, courage, is one of the most important things. Do you think that's trained? Do you think it's inborn? It's one of the most important and one of the most forgotten. We were so surprised when Zelensky decided to stay. We were so surprised when the whole Ukrainian people stood at his side. It was absolutely unexpected. None of, uh, none of us waited that. And nevertheless, it happened. A whole people reconnected with the great tradition of brave citizenship, like in the uh, beginning of America, like in Athens, in the ancient Greece, like in the French Revolution. This is what happened in Ukraine. And this is one of the great events which we, which we saw. When you went on the front lines and you talked to these these soldiers, they're up against a you know, very formidable foe, and the Russians are hammering, and, and they're doing things that are really we haven't seen since World War II, destroying whole cities, bombing uh, you know the sewage plants and the water facilities and the hospitals. Are they losing their, their nerve? Are they losing their, their courage? I never saw that. Maybe it happens, but I never saw that. I was in a lot of uh, hot places, and what I saw is quiet bravery. Not the stupid bravery, which is a fake one, going to, to, to the enemy, but um, a well-mastered bravery everywhere. No, losing their nerves, never. Protecting the weak, uh, putting the old uh, people under shelter, going to fetch them under fire. This I saw many times, and this is what I report in the documentary in many, many scenes. You know that people look at the strategic, uh, the strategic situation from afar, and they say, look, the Ukrainians will, do, will, will make some gains in, these, in this coming counteroffensive. But at the end of the day, the Russians are dug in in Crimea and in that core part of the Donbass that they took in 2014. So they will have, there will have to be some negotiation. There will have to be some settlement. What do you say? I don't believe that. Number one, if there is a compromise, it will be a disaster for all of us. When you do compromise with someone who decided that we are his enemy, and that he declared a total war against the whole civilized war, uh, world, it's a very bad thing. A compromise with Hitler, a compromise with Putin, uh, is for all of us a bad thing, number one. Number two, um, I don't think it would be necessary. What I observed on the ground during these six months of shooting and of footage, each time, the Ukrainians decided, with their wise bravery, to launch an offensive, they won. And sometimes, very often, the Russians did not even try to resist, in Kherson, for example. So, uh, when the Ukrainians will decide to, that they are strong enough, equipped enough to go to Donetsk, to go to, to Crimea, they will, and you will be surprised how little the Russian will resist. Number three, the only thing which is missing and which we have to do is to give the equipment and to give it strongly, quickly, and not in the incremental way, which is the motto and the doctrine of too many diplomats. If we give what they need, things can go quick and the war can stop and we can spare some human lives. 
you are a big supporter of Emmanuel Macron in, in France. On this issue, do you think Macron is searching for a compromise, a solution? He's, he still talks to Putin. Um, do you think he agrees with what you're saying? I think so. I, 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 I think that Macron um, never searched for a compromise with Putin. He spoke with him at the beginning, not to search a compromise, to appeal to what he believed could remain in his mad brain of Putin of reason. He tried to probably to explain to him that he was making an historical mistake, etc., etc., but not to make a compromise. There is one point on which Macron never changed. Putin, Russia has to be defeated. Ukraine has to get the victory. And the victory means what Zelensky will say. Macron always said that. And I had the privilege, by the way, to be um, asked by Macron to be there in his last man-to-man -man meeting with Zelensky in Paris. They had a meeting two or three months ago. I was in the room with André Yermak, President Zelensky, President Macron. And I heard and I saw the position of Macron was very clear. The victory has to be yours, President Zelensky. And what victory means, it's you to decide, not us, not diplomats, not America, not France, not Europe. It's your country, it's your combat, and it's your decision. And this is the position of France. Bernard-Henri Levy, always a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you, Farid.